Going to today on Big House Sports, we're going to be discussing the Canterbury Bulldogs going into the 2024 season. We've got a whole heap of videos that will be going. Obviously, we've got our uh, positional tier makers where we're going to go through every single position across every single player, and we'll be ranking them alongside other content creators. Plus, we've got the draft still going, and we're going to have a lot of these videos. So we just sit down and have a bit of a chat about how teams are going, who we're looking at for potentially playing in a specific position. Because today's video, the Canterbury Bulldogs. There is still a lot of question marks about this team. And I know Dogs fans might hate me for this. You might think that I'm a buddy, the, the devil, the villain. I am maybe the villain over here, okay? I may be the villain. I don't know why I turned Italian there, but the fact of the matter is, is that Bulldogs fans are very passionate. They're very, very passionate. I love that about them. They love their team. And ultimately, they always really buy into the club's organizational processes and what they're doing, and they buy into what they're being told to believe. Right, and I'm going to explain a lot more of why I say that a little bit later on in this video, but they seem to kind of just directly look at what they're being told to believe in, believe in it, and that's kind of where the downfall is sometimes. So, you know, for me, I look at it from an outsider's perspective and I think it's actually a really difficult team to get a read on this year and it's probably more of in the negative direction than the positive direction. Maybe not regressing as a club, but just not being where their fans want them to be just yet is what I would say. Uh, and I think that a lot of it is, is going to come down to the halves. I think a lot of it, and that's what this video is about today, is the halves are a really confusing situation in this team right now. We don't really know what they're going to do. And if they are going to do something that they believe in, I don't know if it's really going to work. You know, you've got teams like the Pemba Panthers who know what they want to do. They've got Cleary, they've got Luai. And if they don't have Luai, which they do, but obviously 2025, he moves on. They still know what they want to do, but they've still got that Cleary right there, solid bang. You know, you've got another team. Let's go and look at the Storm. They've got Jerome Hughes, they've got Munster. That's not changing. It's just as simple as that. The next step down in regards to like clubs that are confident in their halves would be the Sharkies with like a Nico Hines and a Braden Trindle. But there's still a little bit of confusion there whether those guys are going to work out in the long run. Eels up there with the Panthers and Storm and whatnot with Mitchell Moses and Dylan Brown. They know they want to go with them. Uh, you go down to, I guess the Roosters would be in a similar level to the Sharks where they know what they want to go with. They've got Kiri, they've got Walker, but there's still a bit of confusion about the future of those two. I'd say the next step down would be the Gold Coast Titans, my team, who have Kieran Foran in the six. They know they want Fozza. And then in the seven... It is a bit of a concern right now where they're trying to figure out, like, I believe Tan gets first shot. I believe Tan gets first opportunity. He smacks it, slaps it down. But there's also Tommy Weaver there. And there's also a bit of confusion around other positions, i.e. AJ Brimdog Millionaire, Jaden Campbell, Keanu Kinney and whatnot. That could impact the halves going into the future. So that is a bit more of a concerning area. And then you've got the Bulldogs. Right? Then you've got the Bulldogs who we don't know really anything about these halves. Right? We know they want Matt Burton in the halves. But for me, I don't think that... I hope I've explained enough to get to this point and why I'm at this point right now. I personally don't think that their halves should be locked in whatsoever. And I think that the reason why I have such heavy concerns about the Bulldogs going into 2024 comparatively to other people who think they could be a top 8 team, which I don't believe is a possibility right about now, but it does come around their halves. And the reason it comes around their halves is because although they've locked in Matty Burton as a 5'8", I really don't necessarily believe he is in the halves. I don't. I, I don't think that he is a 5'8 or a halfback, in my personal belief. And the reason I say that is because I believe he's a centre. I believe that he is an elusive player. I believe that he is a smart player, strong player. But I do believe that I would lock him in the centres. But that would obviously mean with the Bulldogs that they don't have anybody in the halves of like a, a big stature name, right? Because Burton does have the name. Now, the reason I was saying before about Bulldogs fans buying into the club's culture and the organization and what they tell you is because I think that that's become the, the issue with Burton personally. I think Burton is an exceptional player. I just don't think that he is necessarily the guy in the halves that's going to take you to that next step and to that next level. I think that you do need somebody who actually really is a 5'8 by trade or a halfback by trade. Now, there has been talk about pot potentially moving Matty Burton into the halfback spot, 
but I definitely don't see that as the case. I think that Burton plays a lot better as a 5'8", when he has a lot more pressure taken off him. So maybe that could be my issue there. Maybe that's the issue with Burton. He could be a 5'8", he potentially could be a great 5'8", but maybe my issue is that I don't see him alongside a quality halfback just yet that has been able to give him the room and the space to be that elite 5'8". Because a lot of people say 5'8", halfback are the same thing. No, honestly, they're not. 5'8", is elusive, floating around the bag, fast, pacey, speedy, you know, just kind of moving around, waiting for his moment to pounce, and bang, right? The halfback is a lot more, you know, just there, bang, do this, do that, directional is what I would say there. More stabilizing and directional. Cleary is very good at being kind of both, but I wouldn't put Cleary as a 5'8", because he is a directional player. I don't think that Burton is a directional player. I think he's, you tell me this way, I'm going to kill it down this side. I think I'm going to kill it down here. Although I don't necessarily believe that Burton is going to win the Premiership as a 5'8 for the Canterbury Bulldog, but I think that the reason why Bulldogs fans have such a high regard and a brilliant reputation for Burton in this specific position, and I'll get into the halfbacks in a second, in this specific position is because the club has told you to believe this and the Bulldogs love their club. The Bulldogs fans love their club. They're passionate for the club. So whatever the club tells you, they believe they're going to win the comp. I know many Bulldogs fans were like this. Emilio, my boy, love him. Delusional. Like he'll tell you that they're going to win the comp every single year. But that's because they love their club so much and they will believe what the top of the organization is telling them. Although they have probably no reason to believe them because the last 10, 15 years have been, oh, maybe not 15 years because 2012 and 2014 was fantastic. But the last eight years or so, we'll go eight years or so, they've been diabolical. They've been really, really diabolical. I think that obviously things start hitting home about halfway through the season or even a quarter way through the season when things aren't going to plan and then it can get quite volatile and we know what Dogs fans can be like. I know what Dogs fans can be quite like. So that's what I think about Burton. You know, let me know in the comment section if you don't agree with me, you think he's going to be the greatest 5'8 to ever exist or you can believe he's a halfback. I don't believe he's a halfback. So that wipes him out of the equation for the seven there. Let's put him into the six. We know that's what's going to be done, right? Specifically into the halfback position. You've got Bailey beyond Doe, who is technically listed as a halfback here. You've got Blake Taft coming over from the Rabbitohs, who can play halfback. Um, obviously, also fullback as well, which I guess we can talk about in another video. Stephen Crichton should not be fullback. Uh, technically, technically, Stephen Crichton has played 5'8". Never again. Mm -hmm. We saw that in Samoa. Never again. No, never, uh, never again. Drew Hutchison coming over from the Sydney Chooksters, the Roosters. He's a halfback. They've listed Hayes Premier as a 5'8". Wipe that out of the equation. Same with that. Valley beyond your to be honest with you. Damon Salmon comes across the Panthers. So they've got a really a lot of depth here in this position. Not significant depth, but depth nonetheless. You've also got Carl Oluwapu, who they believed heavily in. I think they're kind of off him now. Matty Burton, obviously, as I said. Uh, and then you've got Toby Sexton. My boy, Toby Sexton, right? Now, I would say that going into the season, the most experienced half there of the lot was Drew Hutterson, for sure, at the Sydney Roosters. Never really lived up to it. Is quite basic, in my personal opinion. It's nothing extravagant, right? 10 times, a billion times, a trillion times the player that I am. So I'm not trying to be salty by saying that. But when it comes to rugby league, I believe that he's quite a basic halfback. You kind of utilize a Drew Hutchison to get you through some tough times before you get your next best thing. Maybe harsh to say, sorry, but in my opinion, it's reality. Um, but I think a lot of these guys are kind of like that. But I think that Drew is probably the safest of the lot. You, you know what his capabilities are. You you know what he is going to give you, is what I would say. Man, I am coughing a lot right now. I'm coughing a lot. So if you've seen a lot of cuts, man, it's because of that, man. Sorry, I've been really sick recently. At least I haven't been choking by day, Bronx fans. <laughs> Serious. Let's get back into it. Toby Sexton, I love this boy. You know, obviously he's from my Gold Coast Titans. I know Toby as well. We used to chat all the time after games. You're driving me back home, basically. I know that he is the best trainer. I know he's an incredible trainer. My issue is that sometimes it might not correlate to on the field. But I also will say that Toby is a lot better than what he gets given credit for. The last thing he did for the Titans was actually win the game against the Dragons back at Seabus in round seven of last year. And I know he has a high ceiling. I think that he has a low floor, but I think he has a high ceiling too. But we need to start seeing it now. Right, we can't wait any longer. We need to start seeing it now. If I'm the Bulldogs, right, I think Oluwapu's situation, he's he's kind of cooked. Sorry guys, I don't know where I've just left off because I'm really coughing a lot. Like I'm coughing a lot, a lot right now. So 
I'm gonna have to kind of wrap this video up to be completely <coughs> honest with you. Jeez, I can't even speak. I was gonna go a little bit more in depth and talk a bit more about it, but I just can't. So it's kind of ruining the flow of this video and kind of where I'm at because I forgot where I was at. Um, because I had to get a drink of water and and um, I, yeah, I don't know. I forgot where I was at. So overall, I think that Toby will probably benefit. Matty Burton the most and I think that definitely for the first part of the season you go with Toby Sexton who I know has that ceiling and just hope that he achieves it like I said I know he's the best trainer doesn't necessarily translate onto the field but you do get some amazing things on the field that we know can lead to more just needs to show it more right and I, I, I love this man I know that he can do it he just needs to prove that he can be a more reliable floor than what Drew Hudson can provide as a ceiling realistically but to go back over my original point the original point is that these halves of Matty Burton, Tommy Sexton, is still a concern. It, it, it is still a concern going into the season. Regardless if you go Toby, Blake Taft, Drew Hudson, Paddy Biondi Odo. It's still a concern. Reed Marley will help, but then again, what did Reed do last year in 2023? Reed, did, Reed had an awful year comparatively to what he did at Parramatta. For this team to be successful, they need to step it up. They need to step it up in the halves. Toby Sexton and Matty Burton need to step it up and they need to have a big year, but I just don't necessarily see it happening. I, I don't because of what I said in regards to Manny Burton, I think they need a more defined 5A. And overall, I would probably say they need a more guaranteed seven. And that doesn't just come on trees. Like it doesn't just grow on trees, lads. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's still a necessary thing to say. There's still a lot of things the Bulldogs need to fix and accommodate for to become a top eight team or even a premiership contending team. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want. Just because they go out and sign these big name players in certain positions does not mean that they are now an amazing team. There is still a lot of holes in this team. A lot of holes. But we'll get into that the, the longer that we do go into this uh, this preseason. So my thoughts here, I'd be going Toby 7. I'd be going Matty Burton 6. Not convinced in it, but I think that's the best options that they do have right now. And let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Prove me wrong. Like, you know, prove me wrong, Bulldogs fans. Like, if you prove me wrong, great. You know, I'm, I'm not here to say that I want this to happen. I'm just here to say that I think that this isn't going to be the year of your dreams. And I think I have valid reasoning for it, but comment below your thoughts. Let me know if you think that I'm stupid. Let me know if you think that I'm a Muppet. Maybe I'm, I'm a bit of a Muppet, man. Maybe a bit of a Muppet. I don't think I am, but uh, a bit of a Muppet. But maybe not in regards to this. Big shout out to the uh, kangaroo, the uh, the old rugby league guru who posted something about this today. So I thought, oh, it's a pretty good idea to, to film this. He'll actually be on the Sharky Strath, the canal Shark Strath that'll come out in the next couple of weeks. That's if I survive uh, the next couple of weeks. I hope you have still enjoyed this video, guys. I have done my best, but yeah, just a little bit uh, all over the shop at the moment. But hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.